Remember, our bodies are trying to get us to repeat behaviors that are in our best interest. And it's making us feel good when we see or do acts of human generosity so that we will do them. In fact, the more oxytocin you have in your body, the more generous you actually become. In other words, the more you do, the more you want to do. It gets better than that. Lots of oxytocin in your body inhibits addiction. It makes it very difficult to get addicted to something when you have lots of oxytocin in your body. It actually inhibits addiction. It boosts your immune system. It makes you healthier. That's why happy people live longer. It's why couples live longer. Oxytocin, it actually is good for us. It increases our ability to solve problems. It increases our creativity. It's really good for us. And it's not addictive. It just feels great. It takes time to build up, though. You know, if I, I went on a date with a girl the other day. It was a first date. We totally got along great. We're going to get married. <laughs> Why are you laughing? That's my social life. <laughs> the reason you laugh is because you inherently know that I cannot form a bond of trust strong enough to get married in seven days. You know that. Why don't you go on a couple more dates? Right? Inherently, you know that. Right? But if I told you that I've been dating somebody for seven years and we're not married yet, what do you say? What's wrong? <laughs> in other words, we know that that bond of trust takes more than seven days and less than seven years. Don't know how long it takes, though. <laughs> so when you start a new job and you're really excited to work there and they're really excited to have you, don't quite feel like you belong. You don't quite feel like you're trusted yet, right? Even though you're really excited and they're really excited, it takes time. And you have to do little acts of generosity and make little sacrifices, do little things for people. Not big risks, small risks. It's like dating. You know, you don't start by buying them a diamond. You start by taking them for lunch, buying them a drink, you know, little bits. Then they take you out or they, you take them out again. You do something a little bigger. Then you do that in a movie. Then they come over and then you buy them flowers. And then you say, I love you. And one day you wake up in the morning. It's like you press this belief button. You just, I, I'm in love. I don't know when it happened. It just clicks and you feel like you belong. Same thing at work. Same thing at work. It just clicks and you feel like you belong because you've got enough oxytocin built up in your system. We don't allow this to happen. We're too busy sending emails. We're too busy sending emails. The next time you want to tell somebody something, email is fantastic for the exchange of information, right? It's fantastic. Here's the report you wanted. The meeting's at 4 o'clock. Fantastic. What did you think of my idea? Do not reply on an email. That's an emotional question. Email is a rational tool. You get up from your desk. You walk the 30 feet, and you say, wanted to tell you what I thought of your idea. And I promise you, not only will that information be better received, but you will start to create relationship because oxytocin starts to get released. If you can't get up and walk 30 feet, pick up the telephone. I've done it. It's an amazing thing. You pick up the phone and you go, hey. They're like, hey, what's the matter? They're like, no, I'm just, I'm just replying to your email. <laughs> wanted to tell you what I thought. And people who tell me, but I need a paper trail, have the conversation, hang up and say, just to confirm what we talked about, boom, there's your paper trail. The reason we get so many emails is because we reply to them all. And 12 emails are sent, and then somebody misunderstands something, and somebody gets angry, and then you have to pick up the phone and deal with it anyway. Do it at the beginning. Quicker, easier, better. Biology. Give your time and give your energy. And this is why leadership is really difficult, because you can't give it to everyone because you don't have enough to give to everyone. You just can't. You have to make sure that you can trust others to trust others to trust others to trust others. And this is what happens in the circle of belonging, in the circle of safety. This is what effective bureaucracy is, which is as the CEO, as the leader, or whatever your job is, you have one responsibility and one responsibility only, which is to make sure the people you know that you have physical contact with, you know their names are confident and feel looked after and encourage them to do the same for the ones who work beneath them, who beneath, work beneath them, who work beneath them. And when this group of people really feel safe, then they will invite in the customer to also feel safe. They will talk to these people as if they are human. I actually flew on, a, on an airline recently and I, it was, I was appalled at how I was treated. It was disgusting. It was like cattle, right? And I said something. I said, why do you treat people like cattle? And she literally said to me, I'm sorry, sir, I have to do it or I'll lose my job. What did she tell me? My organization that I work for doesn't make me feel safe. I don't feel like, like, like I belong. So I'm going to treat you like dirt to protect myself. 
as opposed to somebody who feels safe and says, sir, I will do everything in my power to make sure that you feel happy and good because I'm not worried. That's called a highly effective organization.